11.1 populations and samples. So we're going to continue to look at some populations and samples examples just like we did last week. So here it says survey topic is going to be on number of books read by 7th graders in Fullerton. So to get the results from the entire group, it means we're asking the entire population. However, we are not going to be able to ask every single 7th graders in Fullerton. Therefore, we are going to ask part of the group we call sample. So in this case, an example could be all 7th graders at Park Senior High School. So it is very important that we select the sample randomly. So we call it a random sample. And it is when you are giving each member of the population a random chance of being selected. So a random sample is a better representation of the population, or I would say best. So uh, to get the best results, you want to ask um, the sample randomly, select the sample randomly. So in this case, an example could be having a computer um, select every test name from an alphabetical list of each 7th grader in Fullerton. So randomly let the computer select every 10th name. However, opposite of random will be bias sample where the population is not truly represented. So in this case would be all of the 7th graders in Fullerton who are enrolled in honors English classes. So the question was the number of books being read by 7th graders and if you were to ask those who are in honors English classes, they probably already read more books <clears throat> because of the classroom curricular, and also maybe possibly they might enjoy reading a little bit more. So, we're going to be looking at some of these uh, examples down here and decide whether they're biased or not. So, first one says, an airline surveys passengers from a flight that is on time to determine if passengers on all flights are satisfied. So their sample is passengers on all flights and they want to know if they're satisfied. And they only decide to ask passengers who were on flight that is on time. So what are the chances that these passengers are going to be satisfied or not? So think about it. If the flight is on time, wouldn't they be more likely to be satisfied with their experience? Probably yes. So it would be a biased sample. Okay, the result will come out to be like they're 100% satisfied with the experience because of their experience because of the people they asked. Next, a newspaper randomly chooses randomly chooses 100 names from its subscriber database and then surveys those subscribers to find if they read the restaurant reviews. So you also want to think about does the restaurant review has to do with newspaper? Yes, because restaurant reviews could be featured on newspaper. However, I want you to keep in mind that they chose uh, 100 names randomly. So that is, it is a random sample. If they only ask those who um, requested restaurant reviews, or if you, they only ask those who are frequent restaurant goers, that would be biased. But because they only uh, they chose to the sample randomly, from the subscriber database, entire database, it is a random sample. Next, a manager of a bookstore sends a survey to 150 customers who are randomly selected from a customer list. Again, random. Lastly, a team of researchers surveys 200 people at a multiplex movie theater to find out how much money state residents spend on entertainment. So how much money is being spent on entertainment, they went to the movie theater to ask that. So think about it. If you are already at a movie theater, you are, wouldn't you be more likely to be willing to spend money on entertainment than those who don't go to movie theater? Okay, so this is a biased sample as well. 